Dear learners, welcome to the course MSD012 Ecosystem and Natural Resources. Today, you know, after having few sessions related to energy, about the concept of uh, energy, and then uh, non renewable energy, and alternative source of energy. Today, the point is that when we are having alternative source of energy, looking into the issues, uh, we are facing because of uh, that uh, depletion of stock uh, resources, energy resources. The most important is how to store the energy. So let us have a quick look into the basic approach what we can follow in storing the uh, this energy. As a student of sustainable science, we need to understand those concepts, what is happening around the world, right? As we know that uh, the major obstacle to the widespread use of many alternative energy sources is one of the problem of unevenness in you know in terms of time, space, frequency, intensity, or availability, magnitudes of availability. So, how can we have to solve such kind of problem to a great extent? So, it can be solved by using efficient energy storage system one of the reasons that you know we know that uh, the fossil fuels uh, in general and the oil in particular uh, it can uh, to dominate the world energy uh, uh, because of their high energy content and ease of storage and transportation uh, at the same time we know that hydrogen gas also offers some of the advantages but if you look into disadvantages we can say i must say this as a limitation of hydrogen gas it is being bulky and a lightweight it is much more difficult to store and we know that electricity is one of the most versatile energy sources and uh, but it is difficult to store in large quantity because most of its use is immediately after production. That's why the question comes into how to store the uh, energy. Because when we talk about sustainability, we are, uh, uh, and the most important is availability, accessibility, affordability. So in that, to meet all those things, in turn, when we look into energy, uh, I mean sources or energy resources, that talks about how to store it. Right, in terms of long term use or short term use, depending upon the situation. So, we can look into two major stories. What is uh, one is uh, electrical energy storage, another is heat energy storage. When we talk about electrical energy storage, we know that surplus or intermittent ele electricity, maybe from non renewable or maybe from alternative sources uh, in a mass scale, that can be stored. And, uh, uh, so, uh, some of the stories, I mean, the technique or what we can say, uh, uh, you know, way of storing electrical energy is, you know, one is we can use pump hydroelectric you know, storage, uh, and we can use compressed air energy storage. And uh, when you talk about pump hydroelectric storage system, in that, uh, uh, that it pumps water to a reservoir at high elevation when demand is low as in night to use it for electricity generation when the demand is very high right right so however if you look into the net energy yield they are negative and that the reported efficiency are in uh, 70 to 75 percent of brands so it is again we can say it is also associated with capacity limitation in other environment aspect is in the case of when we know that the impact of having big dams then another uh, way of storing electrical energy storage we know uh, that is compressed air energy storage here in this system uh, uh, they use an underground that uh, underground uh, pump electric system which stores uh, air instead of water and it can be used later on for generating electricity using a modified gas turbine as per the requirement from time to time. Example of this kind of system are, you know, when you talk about underground caverns, especially in salt domes, then we use abandoned mines, then abandoned natural gas wells, and particularly this is very, uh, I mean, common in empty aquifers. Then the net energy yield 
in such kind of stories is moderate to high however you know the system is uh, we can say that uh, when you talk about sustainability we are looking for a pollution free or eco friendly but if you look uh, all from that perspective this kind of system what we talk uh, about is not uh, neither completely pollution free the another form of electrical energy stories is you know electrochemical energy conversion you know uh, this electrochemical energy conversion was developed by alessandro volta uh, around 18000 uh, ad uh, that is uh, uh, that is very commonly used that is the system of batteries right when today when we look into those uh, common battery system you know they are of uh, lead acid variety and they utilize lead plates and uh, dilute sulfuric acid so various types of miniature batteries and dry shells were commonly used and uh, they are of nickel cadmium batteries lithium metal hydrogen batteries hydride batteries these are some example of uh, this category so if you look into the energy density means energy storage per unit weight and number of surge uh, that discharge cycles it takes about normally 500 to 2000 in and uh, these two that energy density and that discharge cycle number of surge discharge cycles they are the deciding factor of uh, the quality of that batteries and uh, today's uh, nowadays we have seen a number of uh, batteries uh, that uh, uh, which they use uh, different kind of uh, metals and metals like you know we have zinc chlorine zinc bromine and hydrogen nickel oxide and because uh, if you look into their efficiency and the uh, use of uh, easy use they are lighter and long lasting so this is how we are uh, using batteries uh, as a storing as a uh, for storing the electricity another promising line to, which are very i mean uh, particularly uh, today's in the front of research in this line is you know involving high temperature batteries that is 3000 up to 300 degrees centigrade uh, that is uh, actually basically such kind of high temperature batteries they are mostly suitable for stationary purpose and we also know about uh, one of the uh, one form of uh, energy storage is foil cells and if you look into those foil cells you know we will see that the pollution caused by such batteries in you know, a uh, that uh, automobile uh, that we search uh, automobile from such kind of places they are non-renewable energy sources uh, and uh, then if you compare those things from non-renewable sources they are leisure and uh, the pollution less pollution and uh, they are i mean uh, uh, we can say uh, uh, that is uh, very i mean uh, better than other source of uh, other stories uh, that uh, system another way of storing uh, this electrical energy is using flywheel simple flywheel in that you no know, uh, uh, what happened in this simple flywheel method the spinning is mount, uh, in mounted case like in a vacuum at a rate of up to 200,000 rpm and the stores kinetic energy that can be used whenever it's needed the another technique is you know superconducting magnetic energy storage system so in that extra current is allowed to circulate around a closed superconducting loop of nearly zero resistance and can be used for later on but beside uh, this is you know this kind of superconducting magnetic energy storage which are expensive it also requires very large areas of land and i know associated with other potential environmental health problems uh, especially you know when you have that superconducting magnetic energy storage they have an electromagnetic field is and created so this is some of the limitation of uh, different kind of you know energy storage electrical energy storage system and coming to the uh, heat energy storage you know uh, we know that the passive uh, heating system uh, which we discuss when we discuss about uh, uh, that uh, uh, renewable source of energy from sunlight and so on uh, we know that this passive heating system are the major heat storage techniques and when the heat is stored in a material by increasing its temperature without any change in its states uh, that is called sensible 
heat storage. The material used in this uh, storage system are, you know, that uh, it can we can use raw clay, water, oil, salt water, etc. On the other hand, now uh, we use another system called lat latent heat storage system. In this system, when the energy is stored as a latent heat of liquid or gas due to change in phase of the material, kind of storage that is called as latent heat storage. In this latent heat, heat storage, we use the material uh, which regains its original state on release of the excess heat. Uh, so, the conversion of water or ice to liquid and uh, back to solid, conversion of water to steam and back to water, these are the examples of latent and uh, that uh, heat storage. The another heat storage uh, system is thermochemical heat storage. This thermochemical heat storage they uses uh, uh, reversible chemical reaction to store heat energy. For instance, you know, methane and uh, the steam, uh, steam means water vapor, I mean water steam, they form uh, that uh, syn gas. So this syn gas in the presence of catalyst again forms water vapor and uh, uh, methane by releasing the heat. So other uh, pairs of such kind of methane and steam in this case syn gas others are you know reactant product like you know ammonia nitrogen and hydrogen calcium oxide and water calcium hydroxide so uh, these are the material uh, that uh, are used in thermochemical heat storage right then uh, when we look into we know that energy crisis is happening demand of energy is increasing because of different pressure because of different region we know that so how we have uh, whether there is any alternative energy uh, that uh, sources can be stored or not right so if we look into those future alternative energy sources we can look into solar hydrogen revolution what is happening nowadays we are looking towards that direction and uh, that uh, when you talk about this uh, solar solar hydrogen revolution uh, that proposes hydrolysis of water using solar energy to produce hydrogen gas and it is one of the future alternative uh, to meet the energy demand uh, in extreme case you know, with a moderate life cycle and uh, uh, have uh, uh, that uh, uh, less environmental impact on the other hand hydrogen can be produced using electricity from the hydropower solar thermal solar cell biomass power plants and wind farm so in the initial phase you know heightened means the mixture of methane and around 15 percent hydrogen that mean heightened can also be used other you know future alternative energy sources or and storage of uh, energy can be you know fuel cells you know fuel cell is a you know very innovative uh, where it has uh, energy conversion efficiency is high, uh, about as high as 65 percent, and which can be minimize the environment and impact even the consumption of the clean oil if we use the clean oil. So, if you look into that fuel cell as an alternative energy sources, you know uh, the mechanism. I, uh, what uh, we see in the fuel cell is. Uh, it is an electrochemical cell that generates electricity through reaction between a foil and oxidant and triggers in the presence of an electrolyte. The another, I mean, that uh, future alternative energy sources is, you know, microbial fuel cells, which uses microbial metal metabolism in generating electricity. So, fuel cells can operate continuously as long as necessary reaction and oxide and flows are maintained. Unlike other un that conventional electrochemical cell batteries, what we are talking about, that they have thermodynamically, thermodynamically those that electrochemical cell batteries are closed system and these in fuel cells are thermodynamically open system because they consume a reactant from an external sources and that can be uh, replenished so we have an, uh, another uh, that uh, system we have also that hydrogen fuel cells uh, that is also one of the future uh, alternative uh, uh, that uh, energy sources for the future in this hydrogen fuel cell it uses hydrogen as its fuel and oxygen 
and acid oxide and that oxygen is usually get from the air periodicity. Many more fuel cells are available nowadays like hydrocarbons and alcohols uh, with chlorine and chlorine uh, dioxide and as oxygen. So uh, this can be this is kind of hydrogen fuel cells and such kind of uh, that uh, fuel cell system methane clatterates in the ocean especially in the ocean bed and they are the source of methane and uh, this methane clatterate is continuously forming means continuous formation is happening and this methane clatterate as we also known as methane hydrate hydromethane or methane ice or fair ice it's a solid where a large amount of methane remains trapped within a crystal structure of water similar to ice. So one liter of methane clatterate solid can release 160 liters of methane gas on average. So magnesium energy cycle by alcohol from lignocellulose material using super uh, that critical technology and uh, bio oil from biomass. Uh, they are some of the promising areas uh, like methane clatterase. Uh, promising areas of uh, energy sources. We also know that nuclear fusion of smaller radionuclei uh, uh, that to form an element of bigger nuclei, hydrogen uh, to helium, and uh, that they also can be produced. Uh, they produce, uh, that uh, they produce energy even at higher than nuclear fusion. These are also possible future source of energy. So, uh, if you look all those uh, this alternative. Uh, uh, future source of energy uh, they remain relatively pollution free as compared to others so today in this small I mean, uh, session what we discuss is about how to i mean store the uh, resources uh, energy resources for long-term uses and what are the future possible energy resources these are a few of the references thank you see you in the next session